All right, now to the midterms. Of course, a lot of action, a lot of last minute campaigning and a big rally today, John, as you know, in uh, Georgia today for Herschel Walker. That's right. Let's check in with senior correspondent John Huddy, who is in Georgia, talking about that key battleground state there. John, looks like the crowd's gathering for the rally there. Well, yeah, the rally just wrapped up. Walker uh, was just uh, shaking hands with some folks. He stepped back on his bus. He's got another rally to go to. Uh, but it was a pretty sizable crowd here in Madison, which is about an hour east of Atlanta. It was about a 20-minute speech, uh, at times very humorous. And when Herschel Walker basically said that the Democrats are throwing everything at him, including, he said, the kitchen sink, he didn't really get into the allegations that have been dogging him throughout the campaign, particularly most recently from women saying that he paid for abortions, but mostly talked about uh, basically, he said the wrong direction the country's going in. But the other headline, along with this Senate race between he and uh, Reverend Raphael Warnock, is the early voting numbers, you guys. 1.6 million people have turned out for early voting here in La Atlanta. That's a sizable, significant increase from 2018 and is really on par with the 2020 election. Now, as I said, Walker's been dogged by some of these allegations. His campaign released a statement saying this was a lie a week ago. It's a lie today, seven days before an election. The Democrats trot out Gloria Allred and some woman I do not know. My opponents will do and say anything to win this election. And basically, he touched on that just very briefly today. Um, now, it's a very close race right now as we go into the home stretch between him and his Democratic challenger Warnock. Some of the latest polls, including from the Atlantic Journal Constitution, show that he's up a percentage point. They've been, been kind of waffling over the last few days, but he's actually taking the lead. So this is a race we're watching. We're also the racing, watching the race for governor between Brian Kemp, who said to more than likely be a 90 percent chance that he's going to win re-election over his competitor, Stacey Abrams. So again, the Walker campaign on to the next stop, you guys. Back to you. All right, John Hetty for us in Madison, Georgia, which is a beautiful little town, by the way. You would know. I've been there a few times. Yes, you would. All right, so let's get out now to Mike Carter, who is tracking what's happening on the ground for us today in Philadelphia. Mike, good to see you. Good. So you actually feel like the Cowboys have a chance. Hey guys, uh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. All right. So Mike, we're here at Bank One Ballpark, Mike, excuse me, Citizens Bank Ballpark chance, here in Philadelphia. Mike, we're here with a couple a of voters. Chance. The World Series, series is here tonight, and we're here with Joe from Upper Montgomery County, about 40 miles north uh, here in Philadelphia. Uh, like, uh, Joe, you're a Democrat. Eagles, you're going to be planning on voting for John Fetterman this time around. But crime is an important issue to you this election season. Talk about that. Well, it's important in so much as that there's the, yeah, that kind of, that doesn't seem to be under there. control with this right now. And I don't see any of the politicians, Democrat or Republican, coming out with any solutions. Everybody seems to be pointing the finger is that there's crime. We, we, know, the, we know the questions. I want to see the answers as well. John Fetterman had a tough time in his debate uh, recently against Dr. Oz. You know, he did suffer a stroke. Uh, some people argue he is not cognitively fit to be a U.S. senator. What do you say to that? I don't quite agree with that from what I've heard from the from the uh, Democrat, from the doctor side of it is, is that mentally he seems to be there. Physically, he's got some issues with, uh, you know, getting into a conversation, which I've seen. All right. Well, thank you, Joe. Uh, we're going to talk to another uh, individual. This is Larry. Larry, you're from Philadelphia. Crime is also an important issue for you. you, you tr you're choosing to not tell us who you're voting for, but talk to us about the crime rate here in Philadelphia, what you've seen over the last two years and why that issue in particular is so important. Um, it's important to me because it destroys my heart. I love my city and young people. Uh, we've had 550 plus murders last year. That was the most ever. And uh, we're on scale for having more this year. And um, to me, that's our future. You know, those are our young, our young, our young people killing themselves or killing each other. Um, and I can tell you who I'm going to vote for is the person that's more interested in the people at the bottom in helping the working class, the people that are struggling, education, you know, and I'm, so I'm not talking about hard on crime, although we should be hard on crime. Right. Another Larry in the city, Larry Krasner, the DA. He's been notoriously soft on criminals in this city, much like uh, Alvin Bragg in New York City. You have a lot of uh, DAs across this country who a lot of people blame for the crime, uh, rising crime rates. When you think of Larry Krasner, what do you think of? Um, I, I think of a guy who stood up to Trump, told him, "Go, come, come, come ahead, come ahead. You know, bring your show into uh, Philadelphia and see what happens." And he didn't. Um, I mean, as far as I don't, I try not to follow too many politics. I always know I'm voting for. I've been voting that way, and my family 
for five generations. It goes back to Ireland, you know. But um, I, um, I, I truly, uh, Krasner, um, do politicians have anything to do? With the violence, you know, do they, can they control the economy or the gas prices? Yeah. No, it's, it's it's just not true. We're always being sold. What's the solution, I guess, for cr for crime here in Philadelphia? What is the solution? <clears throat> it, the solution is economic, right? It's including people. It, it it's it's inc and it's not a short-term plan. It's not about gun violence. You know, it's about taking interest in the lower. Bottom. Yeah, I think a lot of people would agree with you, Larry, on that. Uh, in this Senate race right now, let's take a look at the numbers. Uh, you can see Dr. Oz, according to this later Insider Advantage poll, up 48 to 45. Uh, the governor's race, Doug Mastriano, the Republican, losing, though, to Josh Shapiro. So, right now, a lot of folks in this state are very much undecided. Uh, we just talked to two of them one who's a Democrat who says crime's an important issue, another uh, who doesn't want to share with us who he's voting for, but says crime is also an Issue. So when you take a look at from a policy standpoint, if folks are voting on uh, who's going to do a better job of uh, voting for crime or taking uh, a look at crime, uh, maybe there's some answers there. John Bianca? All right. Mike, Mike Carter, thanks for being with us from Philadelphia. We need to get Mike up into the Poconos, get some different opinions, maybe. Good to yeah, see you. Yeah, good to see you, Mike. No crooked, crooked establishment. establishment. None of that twisting, twisting the truth. truth. No talking down don't to me. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to don't think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news. For real people.